Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond, welcoming you back to the world of Paper Mario, the Thousand Year Door. In the last episode, we went ahead and fought the Gooper Blooper, or maybe it was just a regular blooper, I don't really remember. But I do remember him having adorable eyes when he was all dizzy and stuff. And in this episode, we are going to finally stop dilly-dallying around the underground side of Rogueport, and we are going to enjoy a very interesting transition into a magical special land of wonder and... I almost said wonder and suffering. Yes, that's exactly what we want to experience. No, we're gonna go after the first crystal star in a brand new land because we found the warp pipe that leads us there. But I just wanted to go ahead and get one more fight off camera just because I need to practice them super guards. So now that's taken care of, let's take the magical airplane ride of happiness over to the other side. Try as hard as I can to avoid making another Greatest Showman reference. Jump on this thing in record timing, except for Gumbella, who falls into the water. You think she would die because she's made of paper, but thankfully the water is made of paper as well. Let's go. I guess Gumbella's taking the underwater route. Chapter 1! Castle and Dragon! A much more upbeat location than Rogue Portal, say that much. Well, here we are, the Petal Meadows, where folks say a crystal star hides. Woohoo! Here we go, Mario! The start of our adventure! This is completely awesome! And what's even more completely awesome is that right off the bat you could hit this tree and get a star piece. Very, very nice. And on this tree, you get a mushroom. Even more nice. This place is just so wonderful and wonderful, nothing can possibly ruin this glorious day. Except for Mega Ultra Giant Dragon Booty! Whoa! What was that? Oh, is that a... Wow! Mario, look! Oh? Gee, I wonder if that's where we're supposed to go. I have no idea whatsoever. Totally incredible! I've never seen anything that humongous before! It looked kind of scary, too. Weird. Professor Frankly said this place was peaceful. Wow, crazy! We just started and already there's intrigue. Come on, Mario, let's go! So, that's obviously going to be our main objective, but we have no means of getting to that castle right now, so let's explore the happier side of things. And we got ourselves another mushroom. I recommend just hitting any tree you come across, because more, le more often than not, you will find some uh, extra items in there. Uh, let's see, this one has nothing, make a liar out of me, but we got two good items right at the, right at the beginning, so uh, I'm not completely making stuff up. We just got another fight with a Goomba, but it's so stinking quick that I don't even need to worry about cutting it out because they make fights super stinking easy in this game. It becomes like a formula that you just fall back into, it's uh, just kind of like an orchestra, how you just go through the fights and doing the timed attacks and the stylish attacks and you just, it's really stinking fun to do like that. And we got ourselves a level up, which is nice. Every time you get a level up, you get fully healed, and you get to upgrade one of your stats! So, we could upgrade HP, FP, and BP. We could upgrade HP and FP 5 at a time, and then BP at uh, 3 at a time. The way I always go about playing Paper Mario games, I always upgrade FP first, and then from here on out, I will do HP, FP, BP. That's how I've always done it, and that's how I'm going to continue to do it. So, to start things off, let's give us 10 FP. Feeling a lot more confident with a lot more FP on our side, even though I'm so stingy about ever using it, so I will just continue to not use it. Uh, red item blocks, they actually contain badges. This one is a close call badge. When Mario's in danger, calls enemies to sometimes miss. It's basically the pretty lucky badge, but it only works when we're below 5 HP. So I very much recommend that you have the pretty lucky badge instead. If you want to have this one equipped as well, then be my guest, but I don't think it's all that helpful because when I'm d down to that low HP, then ch <clears throat> then chances are that the enemy's gonna take me down that turn anyway, so I never really uh, care for that item. So we just go ahead and attack these guys, and... and jump on them some more. I do recommend you fight all the enemies along the way. It may seem kind of boring and whatnot, but in typical RPG standards and fashion, you're gonna regret it later if you don't fight enemies along the way. Plus, like I said, they're just quick and easy to 
uh, get through, so it's not too terrible to do. Go and get these things, and we got ourselves a warp pipe and a spiky Goomba, and I messed up again. Ooh, okay, something new. We see that the Goomba back there has a fire flower. Unfortunately, you can only hammer the enemy that's right in the front of the party, so you can't. Ha I can't hammer the one with the fire flower this turn. Uh, but yeah, enemies can sometimes hold items, which is interesting. That doesn't necessarily mean they'll drop it at the end of the battle, it just means that they could use it themselves during the battle, and a fire flower is a pretty devastating thing for them to have. Oh, he's not gonna use it though. And I did the super guard, very, very nice. Uh, let's see, sometimes enemies can also hold badges, which is interesting. It's more so meant for you to steal during the battle if you can. I don't think it automatically means that you get it after you, they, after the battle ends. But let's see, am I gonna get a fire flower? Uh, no, I do not see, so it doesn't mean you're gonna get it. So, if you want that item that they have, you're gonna have to find a way to steal it during the battle. But we don't have any sort of way to do that right now. Uh, just a regular coin block, and I like the little thingies popping out of the ground right there. Uh, if you go into this warp pipe... So, MG, we're all the way up here now, and there's a badge over there! I must get! Curses foiled again! Yeah, we can't actually get that right now, so we'll just remember that for later. One more thing, Mario. If you ever find yourself, like, wondering what to do, just press X and use my tattle ability, okay? We might be able to look up some useful info that'll help us on our adventure. <laughs> I don't know, like, she's just like, Mario, please, it's my one purpose for being, please use the tattle ability. Uh, these patches of grass, you actually examine them and get some items out of them, or just some random coins. But yeah, I feel really bad for the people who had to do all the title information for Goombella. I like the title log for the enemies, but for every single area, I can't be bothered to check all of those. So uh, we're going to jump on this Paragoomba because he has a dizzy dial that makes it so uh, you can confuse enemies and make it so they sometimes miss. Uh, Goombella, you're actually getting to attack this turn. What a miracle. And down he goes. Next is the Spike Goomba. You can sort of tell uh, which enemy he's going to attack. If like, he's super close to Mario, that means he's going to attack Goombella. But if he's stepping a bit far away, then that means he'll attack Mario. So that's sort of a good way that you could tell uh, as to which character you should super guard with. Just so you're prepared for it. And in case it wasn't obvious already, uh, even though Goombella's in the back of the party, it doesn't mean that enemies can't still attack her, as we have plainly seen many, many times. Go and get this warp pipe that just magically activated. Apparently that grass was a secret switch or something like that. Now, I believe there's a secret if you go all the way back this way. No, it's not this way. It's the other way around to the other side, perhaps? And yeah, Gumel just magically disappears because apparently the GameCube couldn't render two party members back here. Either that or they didn't really care to. I sing and love that, the singing transition of the books turning and stuff like that. Yeah, the books turning, no, the pages of a book turning. But if you go back here, you get a star piece, which is very, very nice. As opposed to a very, very not nice. I think if you jump, like, if you see it moves you slightly faster, so that's why I always just jump in the background of these things, because you want to make things go fast. Now that's taken care of, we got this cool looking bridge now, and we can keep on going. Examine the grass! Examine the grass! Ooh, we got something! Oh, no, no, don't fall in the water! A mystery! Who knows what this does? Take a chance and find out! It's a random item. It does something random every single time, as opposed to not every single time. Uh, fire flower does da uh, fire damage to all enemies on the field. Very, very nice. It's actually very powerful. And with that taken care of, we've gotten through Petal Meadows and made it to... Petalburg! Yeah, apparently I could just never escape this place. Yeah, as if... Uh, having to revisit Pokemon Emerald wasn't bad enough. It's chasing me into the land of Paper Mario or something like that. Welcome, travelers! Huh? Where are you, you ask? Why, this is Petalburg! Sorry, but it's been a long time since we've had any visitors here. We're kind of remote. Yippity what yippity Once that dragon hooktail was spotted flying around the area, well, it didn't help tourism, put it that way. People just stopped visiting. Dragon hooktail? That must have been that huge thing we saw earlier, Mario! So, oh, it's called Hooktail, huh? Ooh, scary name! <laughs> so anyway, Brain Boots, have you ever heard of these things called Crystal Stars? We're on this quest for them. It's very important. Crystal Stars, you say? Hmm, nope, can't say that I have. Sorry about that. You might want to speak with the mayor, though. He's old. Really, really old. As such, he knows all kinds of stuff we don't. Koopas of his age are, um, really smart. Anyway, the mayor lives in that pink house up ahead. You should go check it out. A pink house? Sounds totally hideous. But it should be easy to find. Thanks for your help. 
Yes, the old people are so great and full of wisdom and experience. Uh, here's an in case you want to uh, go up, go ahead and heal. But I'm a master at this game, so I don't need to. Uh, this item shop, however, I always forget to do this. I'm just going to go ahead and do it right now. Uh, we got some new items right here. This is Mr. Softener. <laughs> it looks very funny. Uh, softens up the enemy a bit and decreases their defense, which is uh, makes it so you do more damage in a different sort of way. The Courage Shell raises your defense, which is nice. This is what I want to get. You're always going to want to get a power block as soon as you get here. Tax all ground-bound enemies. Just trust your good old Uncle Midnight and see what happens with it. Five coins for it. Just grab it. Thank you very much. And we're out of here. And I believe the point system does carry over between all the shops. It's not like you have to have a point system for each individual shop, thankfully. And you can withdraw items from anywhere in the world. Or at least I hope you can. Uh, you saw Hooktail on your way here. Are you sure? Big old dragon tail and a hook. Oh, uh, wow, you're super duper lucky it, it didn't see you. I'm not even kidding with you. Yeah, if it's seen you, I'm sure it would have gobbled you up like an after-dinner mint. It must have been stuffed or uh, thought you looked gross. At any rate, you were lucky. Uh, look at this tiny toad. Hey, what's up? I gotta say, I'm really hooked on playing GBA games lately. There's this one game that just absolutely rules. It's called Fire Emblem. You ever heard of it? Man, it rocks my socks. Yeah, Fire Emblem recently got localized to North America around the time of this game getting released, so... Then there's Nintendo just advertising it and being proud of themselves and uh, not aware of the fact that people will be obsessed with Fire Emblem in the future and then Nintendo will be obsessed with Fire Emblem in the future since it'll just keep on having a bunch of stinking Fire Emblem characters being in the Smash Bros. or whatever. I'm gonna not get on that tangent. Uh, what do you guys say? It's a babulb. Top of the morning to I, babulber. Babulber, I just met her. Now I'm as happy as can be. Why? Simple because I'm surrounded by flowers. Uh, in the original Paper Mario game, take a drink for every time I say that, we had to find a bunch of bulbs throughout the game and they would activate a later chapter for us, but in this game, this is the only bulb of its kind. He's just a regular NPC. How sad, how the mighty have fallen. But who the heck is this guy supposed to be? Ah, oh, bonjour, mademoiselle. It is a beautiful day, no? No, 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 not you, monsieur moustache. I am speaking to the lovely little cabbage behind you. What do you say, my pretty? Abandon this dullard and come away with moi! Ew! Are you kidding? Ew! My swig, you disco wannabe! Take a hike, bozo the dork! Oh, ho, 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 ho! Sacre bleu! Such a brutal honesty! Such a sharp tongue! Well, I retreat for now. If you change your mind, Jelly, come and find me. What a total sleaze! Let's go somewhere else, Mario! Yeah, he's like a disco Elvis combination but he speaks French and he's in love with Goombella because everyone's in love with Goombella because she's so stinking perfect. Huh, I am General White. I am a ba bomb and I have lost my hopes and dreams. Hey, just like me. <sighs> I live in solitude always. I must apologize but I ask that you leave me alone. Okay then, I will make sure to avoid you for the rest of the game. Hopefully. Uh, we got this house right here with like a bunch of peach posters. Okay, if that's your thing. Hey, uh, well, come on in, I guess. Door's open. <laughs> oh, Hooktail, it lives at the top of the old castle beyond the hummock. The hummock? What? Uh, have you heard the rumors? Some say it's lost its treasure in is hidden in that castle. Scores of people. Scores of people? What are all these words you're saying? It's not, it doesn't make sense. Not a one has returned. So, what do you think? You're getting scared, huh? Not really. I'm more so scared of all the peach posters you have in your house right now. Maybe he's just a very big fan of uh, skirts and he bought them from her shop or something like that. That's it, right? Go over here now. Oh, I guess there's more than one ba bulb. Excuse me for not remembering. So this place is pretty chill and happening. It's basically Koopa Village, except it's a lot uh, flowery, a lot more flowery and stuff. We've got toads and Koopas now. Uh, these are sort of recurring characters that you see throughout the game. These are, uh, hey, 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 it's us, the Happy Wonders, the Traveling Sisters 3. This village is famous for clear water, clean air, and one more thing. That big bad hook tail. We can't wait to see it. So they're just a bunch of tourists that explore the land. They're just sort of fun to look out for as you progress through the game. But yeah, uh, with fire, as far as Fire Emblem goes, I'm not like going way back into a previous topic, but uh, I'm not super upset with uh, all the Fire Emblem characters in Smash Bros. as a lot of other people are. But if I would, be, I would be okay with Fire Emblem characters being so prominent in Smash Bros. if they weren't all played the same, basically. So. I am excited for Krom though, like, I really like how he looked in the trailer, he looks like a fast Ike, which is interesting to me, so I feel like he's gonna be very sink and powerful, or, uh, played in competitive play or something like that. He's gonna be, the, like, the favorite Fire Emblem character, but maybe that's just me. But anyway, in case you didn't notice, the pink house is right over here, and there's a badge we can't get, how horrible. 
just go up in here and here's big old mayor what's his name again? mayor croup i think who was that someone here who is it who what do you want from me i know you're thieves here to rob a defenseless old koopa despicable oh, 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 oh. no no go on do what you will but as you complain you see there's nothing to steal here Oh, I guess I have a little money. Take it, you fiends. And my antique shell, too. Just leave the photos of me and the missus. Can't do without those memories. Oh, no. What? Not thieves, you say? Well, what's your story, then? Oh, wait. You folks looking for crystal stars? Well, why didn't you pipe up before, you agent? We're just wasting time here. Those crystal stars, you say, you're hunting. Er, uh, wait, what did I hear about those darn things again? Aha, uh -huh, got it! Hooktail! Hooktail's got what you're looking for! It's the enormous ornery dragon eats folks, they say. You know Hooktail, right? Of course I have, or I may have heard the name. Well, this Hooktail's brutal flyby snacking to all of us pins and needles. So are you reckless fools? I mean, are you gallant heroes out to rough it up? Uh, what? Hold on then now. This does sound promising. Why, if you can rid us of this hooktail, we'll shower you with gratitude and rewards. Wait, what's that I hear? You accept no reward? I didn't say that. Uh. What an unselfish man. You're noble indeed. Yep, a good egg. Now, what did you say your name was again? I'm a Mario. Murphy? Her, that's a fine name. Yes, a fine name indeed. Well now, Murphy, the name is a Mario. I appreciate that, Murphy. They are nice eyebrows. Now listen up. If you're intent on going to Hooktail's castle, find the secret pipe near this village. I don't know where it's at, but I know you need stone keys to that use that pipe. The keys are somewhere in Strong Fortress, just past the village. Get them first. Oh, yeah. Well then, Murphy, get going and take care of that Hooktail monster. Well, that was an experience and a half. So, we are now given the mayor's permission to go to Schwank Fortress and get what we need to enter Hooktail's castle. Very interesting indeed, but yeah, this is just like an example of how stinking hilarious the characters in this game can be. And hello, we got an email. What the fruit is this nonsense? This is Mario. We don't have technology in here. You got an email. As you travel, you may receive email from people uh, you've met on your journey. You can read these emails on your mailbox SP. Yeah. Press start slash pause to access the menu and check your email. You'll find it under important things on your gear screen. That's something I could have shown off in the last episode while I was just wandering around. Uh, let's go in here into the important things, the mailbox SP. We have two things, one from Frankly and... How's the registration email after the one we got from Frankly? I don't know. Frankly, email. <laughs> He's a sinking old man, just names his email, email. Hello, Mario, working hard. Professor Frankly here in e-form. It's highly likely you'll receive emails like this one you're, while you're on your journey, so check your mail often. I actually have nothing more to say than that, so I hope all goes well for you, and I look forward to getting more information on those crystal stars, Professor Frankly, and he sends you photos, which is very funny. That piece of paper in his trash can, that will actually be something relevant for later. Uh, well, technically not for my playthrough, but I'll explain it a bit later. Uh, the RDM registration. Uh, direct mail verification. Dear Mr. Mario, thank you for registering with Rogueport Direct Mail, RDM service. Your kind friend, Mr. Frankly, referred you to us. Okay, I guess that's why it came up second. Our direct mail service will provide you with regular timely news updates. We hope you enjoy your service. Uh, published by Report Registration Committee. Uh, so that's just a cool little extra that you could uh, see on your adventure. And apparently it was so incredibly boring that Mario and Gumbella fell asleep. Uh, we'll talk to this guy. An old stronghold called Strong Fortress lies, a lies ahead. A stone creature lives there. At least it might live there. This gate is to keep it out. My job is guarding the gate. But if the mayor says it's okay, then I'll let you pass. Careful out there, though. What is it with all these villages and gates? Um, excuse me? Uh, I beg your pardon. Wait a moment, please! Who's this nerd? Uh, pardon me for yelling like that. I was panicking. Um, how to begin? My name's Coops? I heard you were traveling to Hooktail's castle. So, anyway, I, uh, have a favor to ask. Well, um, oh, just, just forget it. 
Never mind. Ignore me. Good. Goodbye. Okay. Uh, that was weird. What do you think that was all about? Talk about issues. Well, I can't think of a better way to end the episode than on that note. So, we made it to Petalburg, through, went through Petal Meadows, and we are headed to the Schwank Fortress now. Next time on Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door, we are going to do what I literally just said, so I don't know why I'm repeating myself. This is Midnight and Beyond, and I will see you all later. Good night.